Hey everyone, Corey with Fletcher Construction. I'm also here with Dewey, he's one of our techs. And today we're gonna to be walking you through the proper process of installing a double hung window. So today for our install, um, we're gonna be installing a vinyl replacement double hung window. There's lots of different types of windows as far as even what the actual window is made out of, um, whether that's vinyl, there's aluminum, um, there's composite. And then even beyond that, there's different styles of windows, whether that's vinyl replacement, new construction, uh, wood windows to where um, with wood windows, you have the wood frame of the window and then the actual wood window sashes themselves to where you would just take the sashes out and the replacement window would fit into the existing wood frame. What we have today is not that, what we did for our display wall is more of, because that's what we run into here in the mid-Atlantic region a lot more, is we're acting as if a vinyl new construction window was installed here. We removed it and it's just drywall for the returns or the jams. So our replacement window is going to fit not to the rough opening, but fit back into the jam opening from drywall to drywall. The first thing you always want to do, regardless of the type of window you're removing or uh, installing, is always check the opening for level, square, and plumb. Depending on what you find, you may at this point start to, to shim the opening before setting your window in. So we're looking pretty good. Our opening is nice and square, uh, plumb and level. We're gonna dry fit the window in, make sure that it actually fits before doing any sort of uh, screwing. Mm -hmm. Window fits into the opening well. So after you've dry fitted the window in and made sure that it actually fits, we're here on the inside of the window now. And what we always like to do is from the interior drywall, measure back two inches and mark a line. And that line is gonna indicate how, where the window and how far the window is gonna sit inside of this jam. The reason why we do two inches from the interior drywall out is most blinds are about two inches or less. So then this way, when people get replacement windows, cause they are thicker than new construction windows, they're still able to reinstall their blinds uh, back. Because if not, and you take that replacement window and you fit it all the way in, it's gonna leave you no space to install your blinds back. So like I said, we always like to leave those two inches just for that purpose. While it is possible for one person to install a window, depending on the size, obviously, we always suggest it's a two-man team, one person on the inside while one person is on the outside putting the window in before you start actually installing the window. So one of the first steps I always like to do before we actually install the window, and it just helps with prepping the window to make the install go a little bit faster and smoother, is to take the jam covers out before this way you're not having to try and do that while the window is set in the opening and you're trying to hold a um a drill and do it all at the same time it's just one simple step that really helps now we got brian here with us to just make sure this window doesn't go crashing through the opening but Dewey and i are going to set this window into the opening and start uh installing it So what we're doing is lining this window up with those marks that Dewey put on the window uh, before. The other thing that we like to do is lift the bottom and top sash about three quarters to an inch just so we have um, a look at what our margins are um, for our sashes because we're always wanting to make sure that the margin between the frame of the window and the top and bottom sash 
is the same as well as the frame and the margins on the side of the sashes. So that's why we open up about, like I said, three quarters to one inch of, of the sash just to make sure that we can see the margins and this window's getting fit into this opening nice and square and plumb. So before we start installing any of the screws, now is when we start shimming once again to get all of our margins looking the, the same. So once we have the door fit into the opening, everything is shimmed that we way we want it. This way our reveals and margins around the window frame in the opening and the sash in the frame are all equal. Dewey will start actually installing the screws to hold the window in place. Starting with the, the top and every time he installs the screw, he's gonna check, make sure that that didn't affect the margins any at all and we don't need to do any more sort of shimming. After Dewey installs the two top screws, We'll go ahead, do the same thing at the bottom with the two uh, bottom screws, and then once again in the middle. To install the middle screws, you're gonna need to lift up the bottom sash above the frame, use the tilt latches to tilt the window down. Most of the time it's always helpful to have someone hold the, the window, but in certain cases you can either let the window go all the way down or use something to, to prop the, the window up. There will usually be jam covers that you can pop out. So here in the middle, you have two tension screws, which helps put tension on the frame to the opening to just help keep this window from, from getting out of whack. After screwing down your tension screws, you'll want to put your jam covers back on. After reinstalling your jam covers, you'll want to install the screw covers back as well. Last and final step that you want to do is just operate the window and make sure that both sashes operate tilt correctly and that they're nice and smooth operation nothing's binding or getting caught up on on anything sometimes if the locking mechanisms don't match up there are screws where you can adjust those um, to where you would just unscrew the back locking mechanism lock both window sashes it will adjust that back lock and then open up the window sashes and then rescrew. so then this way you know both locking mechanisms are lining up um, in this case both of ours already line up and work out perfect so no need to to go and do that but sometimes that is a necessary step in the installation process now do is just cutting and removing uh, the shims that we use to help square and plumb uh, this window up. Once Dewey has cut and removed the shims, um, you want to take some spray insulation foam or batten insulation, whatever you have or you prefer, and spray or shove some of that foam in and around between the frame of the window and the actual opening uh, of the window. And that's just gonna help insulate the window so you're not feeling any sort of draft or losing any sort of um, AC in the summertime or heat in the, the wintertime. One last final cosmetic step that we like to do here at Fletcher, um, instead of just caulking after we have insulated around the window, instead of just caulking the window frame to the drywall, we like to take a flat piece of vinyl uh, trim and just trim out around the inside of the, the window frame. Um, this just helps with us being able to use a smaller caulk bead so it's not 
as big of a caulk bead around the, the window frame and it just helps to hide any imperfections, whether that be in the drywall not being perfectly straight or anything like that. And it just makes for a nicer cosmetic finish. Last and final step after Dewey's installed the flat vinyl stock trim that we use to just finish off around the window. Um, and like I said, to, to cover up any sort of imperfections. Do we just caulk and seal around the inside of the, the window. So depending on if you're doing just a window replacement or if you're replacing both the siding and the windows at the same time will determine whether or not you have to use some custom bent metal to fill the gap in the void between the replacement window and there's no siding on our display wall, but in the case of on a real home, if there's already existing siding in a J channel to fill, like I said, that void between the J channel and the replacement window. So we're just gonna, for the time being, install the custom made aluminum trim all the way around this window, acting as if we were filling that void. Since most of the time we're doing just window replacements, while the existing siding is still on the house. So do we'll start capping the outside of this window with that custom aluminum made trim. Once again, just installing the pin nails in an area that is not face nailed. So then this way we're hiding uh, the nails as much as possible. As you can see, the last and final process of the installation of the window is just caulking around that aluminum uh, trim that we use to wrap around the outside of the window frame. And that wraps up everything, keeps water from getting inside the, the window or from a, around the window and just helps seal everything up. And that concludes the window installation video. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. We look forward to seeing you in the next one.